wipe this. What's up? <laughs> that? I thought maybe we were like just gonna take a nap and then you're filming. I don't know. I know it's only you and I. What's going on? Oh, I lost track of time this morning. How are you? What? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Oh, great. And we got soft flow today, so that's great, too. Oh, I need soft flow. I got to get rid of a little bit of tension. Got to, like, get... Yeah. Me, too. Yeah. Me, too. And Chester's okay. going to join us. Hey, Chester's, Chester's here. He wants to Hi. join. Hi. Hi. Chester? <laughs> Hi. Are you the sweetest boy? Are you a good boy? Sweet. You a good boy? He's a good boy. He sat down for that one. All right, soft flow. Hey, let's do it. Oh, girl, I love this. <laughs> Maybe Wendy will hop on five in five minutes. Who knows? I know you never know with work, huh? What's that? She's working, so you never know. Yeah, yeah. It has been weird vibes, though. Like, these last few days. My class this morning was packed. Like, it's weird. Something... Weird energy happening right now, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know, but I got to tell you, when Kamala took over and Joe Biden stepped back and supported her, I think everyone gave a collective sigh of relief. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like, like, they, maybe some, I feel like maybe something's changing. It's like, hmm. good stuff, good no, stuff. No. Yeah, relief and like, like. Ooh, kind of like this. Ooh. <laughs> you know, I'm like, ooh, what's going to happen now? This is getting good now. Thank <laughs> God it's getting good because it was real not good for a while. I know. <laughs> it's like a table turning. Yeah, tables are turning, I hope. Okay. All right. Let's do the thing. I'm trying to spotlight myself, but I can't figure it out. But you got it how you need it, right? Yeah. You're good Absolutely. to go? Okay, perfect. I'm excited. Okay, let's so... do it. <laughs> okay, sorry, I muted you. <laughs> okay. Let's do it, Barb. Stop blowing. Let's just get right into it. So, tabletop position, hands and knees, and start to move through your cat cows. And as you start to move through cat cows, you're more than welcome to get a little more creative or curious, just kind of feeling around. And also begin to connect with your ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose, little constriction in the back of your throat, start to create that whisper noise as you breathe. So cat cow it out or just move intuitively feeling around into whatever your body wants or needs. And maybe you're not really sure what your body wants or needs, so now might be a time to feel around and kind of just explore that. What does my body need today? What feels stiff? What feels tender? And then let's just say in our next couple breaths, downward facing dog, take it all the way back. Get up, so lift your hips, press them back when you are ready. Nice work, and then pedal it out. Maybe nod your head or shake your head. Feel your strong hands on the ground, so fingers nice and wide, strong arms, strong shoulders. Lifting from your center, from your belly button. Take one more inhale into your dog pose. And then with your exhalation, just slowly crawl your hands to the very back of your yoga mat until you're in a forward fold position. So feet in the back of your mat, forward fold. Bring your feet a little bit wider than your hips, but keep your toes facing forward. Ragdoll pose, grab opposite elbows or you can fold your arms, but try to let your arms be above the crown of your head. So back of your neck is nice and long, your neck is relaxed. 
You can have a little or a big bend in your knees. Sway or bounce or bob. Breathe into your back body. Notice if you're rocking onto the outer edges of your feet. And if so, see if you can press onto the inner edges as well. Take one more huge deep breath here. And then at the bottom of your exhalation, release your arms and just slowly roll up. So let your arms hang heavy, let your head hang heavy as you roll up one vertebra, vertebra at a time. Your head is the very last thing to lift and stack. And then once you're standing, your head stacks. You can adjust your feet. So if you wanna bring your feet hips with this distance or even come to a big toes touch, that's traditional, feel free. Take a few shrugs or a few rolls with your shoulders. So shrug your shoulders up, pull them back and down. And then next time your shoulders, shrug up, pull them back and down, open your palms forward. So if it feels better to take your arms out a little wider, that's fine, mountain pose. So root through your feet, draw up through the crown of your head and broaden through the front of your shoulders. Take up space here. Feel like a mountain, powerful, strong, rooted, solid, spacious, vast. And feel your big deep breaths flowing through you. Invitation to close your eyes and feel your inner space. Feel what it feels like to stand from the inside, not from the outside. Take with your next inhale, take the biggest inhale you've taken all day long and hold. Open your mouth, side out. Ah, do that one more time. Great big, huge inhalation. Hold. And out your mouth. Ah, very nice. Ujjayi breath. Switch it back on. Reach your arms up. Inhale. And exhale. Dive down. So hinge at your hips. Lead with your heart all the way down. Fold in. Lift halfway as you breathe in, lengthen spine parallel to the earth. Exhale, bow and fold. And this time, let's reverse swan dive all the way back up to standing arms to the sky. Inhale. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's take one more half sun salute, just like that. Inhale, reach. And exhale, dive down slowly. Feel the connection to your core, navel to spine as you dive, then fold. Halfway lift position, inhale. And exhale, let it go, fold in. Press into your feet, lead with your heart, rise back up, arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, hands to your heart center. All right, inhale, reach up. This time, exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders back and down, shoulder blades squeeze towards your spine, and then maybe you even press your palms together. So I prefer a little bend in my elbows, and then imagine elbows are magnetized towards each other, so you can start to reach your hands back away from your body. Maybe, maybe not, it's okay if not. And then start to lift your heart up, gaze up, perhaps press your hips forward just a little bit, hug in with your inner thighs, take one more big in breath. And keep your clasp, exhale, hinge on your hips, take it all the way down and fold. Hang out for about two or three breaths in your fold with your hands clasped behind you. Let your neck relax, head heavy. Lift, using that connection to your center, navel to spine. So lift your sit bones, lift your knuckles. If you're pressing your palms and it feels like too much, let that part go. Work the opening in the front of your shoulders. Last big inhale. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your low back first, then release your clasp. Let your arms come down and hang. Give them a little shaky shake or give your head a little shaky shake. Halfway lift position, breathe in. Plant your hands or your fingertips and crawl forward slowly and stay as graceful as you can. So connect to your center. You're not heavy, you're moving lightly. Once you're in a plank position, that's where we're going to pause. So top of a push-up, spread your fingers wide and push the ground away. If you prefer to bring your knees down, feel free. Take a big inhale. 
And as you exhale, slowly lower all the way to your belly. Let's go with a Spider-Man Cobra. Hands come out to frame your yoga mat. You're on your fingertips. Inhale, lift. Exhale, take a little twist to your right side. Dip your left shoulder down. Inhale through center, lift your heart. Exhale, twist left, dip your right shoulder down. Nice, Barb. Inhale, back to center. Tone your belly as you lift your heart. That belly, that tone in your belly protects low back. Exhale, release, lower down. And just rise to hands and knees, tabletop position. All right. From your tabletop, make sure your knees are at least hips with distance apart. We're going to move into a thread the needle, but we're going to thread it three times before we come down to rest. So on an inhale, take your right arm out and up. As you exhale, thread your right arm through. Reach, 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 but don't come down to rest yet. So you're hovering. Your core is engaged. Inhale, unthread. Reach out and up again. Exhale, thread it through. So as far as you can reach, all the way to emptiness. And then inhale, back up. Last time, exhale, thread it through, and now come down. So outside of shoulder and head, gently to the ground. If there's any way you want to work this, feel free. So maybe your left arm wraps behind your back. Maybe you're pushing into the ground with your left fingertips. Just big, expansive inhales into your back body. Slow, steady exhales all the way to emptiness, soft through your face, your forehead, eyebrows, jaw. Um, all right, if you do have your left hand lifted, which it looks like you do, left hand back down. And on an inhalation, unthread your right arm. Reach it out and all the way back up one more time so as you can reach. And then right hand to the ground. Let's take it back to down dog. All right, from your down dog, inhale your right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, thread your right foot forward. So all the way up in between your hands, low lunge. And we're gonna rise to a warrior two. So back heel pivots down. Heart will your arms up. So your hips are open. Your right knee is tracking towards your right uh, pinky toe. And your back foot is parallel to the back edge of your mat. Next time you inhale, reach forward. So going into side angle, reach, 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 reach. And then tip it over. So right hand to the ground. Yeah, left arm to the sky or right elbow to right thigh. I also like to reach my left arm forward, bicep next to ear. So your variation, take about three more rounds of breath. Open through your hips and the front of your heart. Press into the outer edges of your feet and track your front knee towards your pinky toe. One last round here. As you inhale, press into your feet and come back up, warrior two. And then straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, moving into a wide-legged forward fold. So all of your toes face directly forward, arms to the sky, breathe in. And as you exhale, just dive down. So stick your butt out, reach your heart forward, and then fold, let it go. Hang out for about five rounds of breath or so. And if you want to move any way you want to move, go for it. If you want to play any way you want to play, go for it. So this is your time. Be in your body. Be with your breath. All right, last couple of rounds. So if you're working somewhere, finish up. Maybe an open mouth sigh would feel good. And let's come to a halfway lift position. Fingertips or hands down. 
So bend your knees as much as you need to and walk your hands forward back to a low lunge position and just step your back foot forward, forward fold at the top of your yoga mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, release, fold. And rise, take it all the way to stand. Arms overhead as you breathe in. And exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, reach up. Side body stretch over to your right. So you choose what variation you want to take. Right hand could come to right hip. You could grab your left wrist. Think of creating a crescent moon with your body. Lengthen through your left side. Breathe into your left side. And next time you inhale, let's come back to center. Both arms up, realign. Other side as you exhale. So over to your left or even think up and then over. Lengthen right side body, any variation. Slow, powerful breath. Breathe into your right waistline, last round. And back to center, both arms up. Exhale, slow dive all the way down. Halfway lift, inhale, stick your butt up. Exhale, plant your hands, step your feet back, plank. Inhale at the top of your push-up, feel free to come to your knees. Exhale, lower down slowly. Let's come into a Spider-Man Cobra, but probably don't lift quite as high. We're gonna do something different. So bend your right knee, press into your right set of fingertips and roll up and over onto your left outer hip. So reach your right toes towards the ground behind you like your right leg is a scorpion tail. See if you can let your left shoulder kind of dip down towards the ground and take one more round here. And slowly come back through center. Take it to the other side. So right leg is extended, left knee bends. Roll up onto your outer right hip. Reach your left toes towards the ground behind you. It's kind of like a little shoulder pigeon variation. Breathe, big deep breaths. And bottom of your next exhalation, let's just bring it back, lower down. Hands and knees, tabletop position. So knees, at least hips with distance, probably just a little bit wider is good. And then we're gonna go in to thread the needle, but we won't come into it until three times we've threaded through. So out and up, inhale, left arm. Exhale, thread it through. Use your core, reach as far as you can, and then inhale, unthread, reach up. Exhale, underneath. All the way to empty, you're hovering. Inhale, unthread, last time. And exhale. Reach your left arm through. When you are all the way empty, just come down, gently rest on your shoulder and your head. Any way you want to work the pose for a few deep breaths. Coughing, soft jaw, breathing to your back body a lot, last couple. Put your right hand on the ground if it's not there already. And then on an inhale, on thread your left arm, reach it down all the way up towards the sky. Exhale, set it down. Downward facing dog. Ujjayi breath. From your dog pose, inhale, left leg, back and up, three-legged dog. Exhale, use your strong core to slowly step your left foot all the way up in between your hands. All right, well, your two back heel pivots down. And then rise when you're ready. So left toes forward, right toes to the right. Hips are open, heart is open. 
Settle in. Feel your front knee. Track towards your pinky toe. Try not to let it collapse towards your big toe. Next inhale. Reach forward. So even feel your rib cage slide a little bit and then side angle posture. Left elbow to left thigh or left hand to the ground or a block. Right arm could reach straight up or right arm might reach forward by some next to your ear. So your variation, give it about three or four more breaths. Feel whatever there is to feel. Modify or adjust however you need to. Be in your body, last couple rounds. And then next time you breathe in, let's rise back up to a warrior two, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. So all of your toes face towards the long edge of your mat. Take your arms to the sky as you inhale. And then as you exhale, let's dive down. Wide-legged forward, fold anywhere you want to go. Doesn't have to be the same thing you did before. It can be if you want it to be. Make sure your breath is right there with you. Last couple. Next inhalation, halfway lift. Fingertips or hands to the ground, bend knees as needed. Exhale, walk your hands forward, come into a low lunge. And then just step your back foot forward, come into a forward fold at the top of your mat. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, let it go. Take it all the way up, arms over ahead as you inhale. And exhale, hands to heart, exhale. Arms up, inhale. Side body stretch, you can make it your own. Over to either side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, other side. You can make it your own. Inhale, back to center. Set a little baby back bend this time. Exhale, cactus your arms. Navel to spine protects low back as you curl open. Inhale, re-extend, realign. And then dive down slowly. Forward fold. Lift halfway with your inhale. And exhale, plant your hands, feet back, plank or modified, you choose. Inhale, push the ground away, slowly lower down. This time, let's go for a sphinx pose. Forearms to the ground, elbows under your shoulders. Forearms are parallel. Rather than pressing your belly down, try your belly button in and up so it doesn't lift. But you feel that tone in your low belly and the length in your low back. So you want to reach your tailbone down towards your heels and press down through your shoelaces. Try to spread your toes and press down through your toenails. Now with your arms, your forearms, push down and pull back energetically. Might feel good to let your head come forward, chin to chest, and draw little smiley faces with the crown of your head, working the back of your neck. So keep your shoulders down, keep pulling back energetically as you push through your forearms, belly of your forearms. Spread your fingers and press through thumbs and index fingers especially. Take one last inhale and then exhale, release. Let's just lift up to a tabletop. And this time, child's pose. So knees can come out wide or knees together or somewhere in between. Sit back and rest. Might feel nice to kind of sway your hips side to side or roll your forehead side to side. All right. 
Downward facing dog. Inhale, take your right leg back and up. Open your right hip up. So bend your knee, reach your right knee out. And then see if you can lift, lift, lift. So squeeze through your outer right butt cheek. Press down through both of your hands firmly. Take one more in breath. Exhale, knee to your nose. Step forward softly. Low lunge position. And then let's add a twist. So left hand down, right arm to the sky, revolve lunge. Open through the right side of your heart. Back knee can come down if you'd like. Or if your back knee is lifted, back toes are powerful. Back leg is powerful. Use your exhales to work your twist from your center. Take about two more. If there's a variation you want to work, go for it. And then unwind, let that go. And we're going to move into a pyramid stance. So step your back foot forward about a foot or so. You want both feet flat on the ground. I prefer all 10 toes facing forward. And I like my feet on little train tracks, invisible train tracks. Some people or traditionally feet are on a balance beam. Their back foot is at about a 30 degree angle. So you choose what works best for your own body. Lift halfway, inhale hands to hips. And then press into your feet, come all the way up to a standing position. So once you're standing, make sure both of your feet are flat on the ground and square your hips as much as possible. So pull right hip back, left hip forward. Take your arms to the sky, inhale. And then as you exhale, we'll twist left arm forward, right arm back. Squeeze through your inner thighs and stay rooted through the inner edge of your right foot, your front foot. As you root through the inner edge of your right foot, Try to pull your right hip back, left hip forward. Twist from your center. Take one more deep breath. Twist, twist, twist. Legs stay the same. Unwind your upper body. Breathe in, reach up. And take your dive down. Pull your right butt cheek back, back, back. And you reach your heart forward and then fold. Pyramid pose. So think forehead toward chin, nose toward knee. And then pull your right butt cheek back and up. See if you can feel the front of your right thigh, your quad muscle firing. Breathe about three or four deep breaths, working your pose in your way. Fingertips to the ground or hands on blocks, or if there's another place you want to have your hands, that's fine as long as it's intentional. Soften your face, unclench your jaw. Stay rooted through the inner edge of your right foot. Last round. And bottom of your exhale. Just step your back foot forward, forward fold. Lift halfway with your in breath. Exhale, fold. Pause. Walk your feet out to the width of your mat. Toes wider than your heels. And then come down into a low squat, malasana. So elbows at your inner thighs or inner knees and hands at your heart. Be here for about five rounds of breath, just breathing all the way down into your pelvis and your groin. Stay, if at all possible, keep your heels down. And then if you're rolling onto the inner edges of your feet here, see if you can bring a little more weight into the outer edges as well. If you're rounding your back a lot, see if you can find a more neutral spine. Broaden through the front of your shoulders. Breathe, couple more. See if you can pick up your toes and spread them apart. Active feet. Good work, fingertips to the ground. Lift your hips slowly back up towards the sky and heel toe your feet in however you prefer them. All of your toes are now facing forward again. Lift halfway as you inhale. Exhale, let it go. Let's roll up. So super slow. Roll, roll, roll. One vertebra at a time. Head is the very last thing to lift. Once your head stacks, roll out your shoulders. 
Tadasana, mountain pose, so arms out to your sides, palms forward, rooted through your feet. Slow, spacious breaths as you embody a mountain, rounded, rooted, strong, bold, vast. Stay as you are, fill up as big as you can, taking up space, hold, extra sip, and then out your mouth, sigh it out. Inhale, arms reach up. Turn your ujjayi breath back on. Exhale, side body stretch of your choice. Go to either side first. Inhale through center. Other side as you exhale. Inhale, center. Little baby back bend. Exhale, cactus your arms. Make it come from your mid and your upper back. Inhale, re-extend, realign. Dive down slowly as you exhale. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, plank or modify. Inhale and push the ground away. Exhale, lower slowly. This time you make it your own back bend of your choice. Feel free to take a couple breaths or so. Child's pose when you're ready. Hips to your heels, forehead to your mat. And just notice whatever there is to notice. No right or wrong. And downward facing dog. All righty, from your down dog, inhale, left leg to the sky. And exhale, open your left hip, bend your left knee. Feel it open. Squeeze through your outer left glute. Press through both of your hands, strong through both of your shoulders. Take one more in breath. As you exhale, knee to your nose. So scoop out your belly, round through your spine. Then as soft as you can, step your left foot forward. So you're in a lunge. We're going to add a twist. Right hand on the ground or a block, left arm up. Revolve lunge. Back knee can come down or stay lifted. If your back knee is lifted, strong through your back leg, pressing through your back toes like there's power coming from your toes, moving through your leg, connecting to your center. Open through the left side of your heart. Breathe all the way down into your belly. Last couple of rounds. And then bottom of your next exhale, unwind. Pyramid stance, back foot steps forward about a foot or so. So it depends how long your legs are, but you want both feet flat on the ground. All 10 toes face forward, feet on two train tracks, two skis, or feet on a balance beam, little angle in your back foot, about a 30 degree angle. Come to your halfway lift, hands to hips, breathe in. And then press into your feet, come all the way up to standing. Nice job. Check in with your hips, see that they are Nice and even. So left hip draws back, right hip forward. If you need to make any adjustments in your stance, do so. Arms to the sky. Inhale here. Exhale, twist, right arm forward, left arm back. So squeeze through your inner thighs, stay rooted through the inner edge of your left foot. And then feel the twist coming right underneath your rib cage, from, coming from your waistline. Draw it in through the front of your shoulders. Reach through your fingertips like you have great big wings for arms. Squeeze your inner thighs. Take one more round of breath. Maybe you even case back over your left shoulder. Legs stay the same. Unwind your upper body. Breathe in, reach up. And then take your dive as you exhale. So pull your left hip back as you reach your heart forward. And then fold. Forehead towards your shin. Nose towards your knee. 
navel towards your spine all the way to empty with each exhalation. So you're using your breath to work the pose. Your breath isn't just there to be some extra thing that bothers you and that annoys you that you have to keep track of. It's there to help you. It's there to create space inside of you. So use it. Your body does not communicate with English words. It communicates through breath, through sensation, through energy, through impulse, intuition. So we want to connect with our body. We can't just be up in our heads talking. That voice in our head is not us. It's just our thoughts. So tune in and feel what's there. Last breath, working your pyramid pose all the way to empty as you dive just a little bit deeper. And then very bottom of your exhalation, just step your back foot forward, top of your yoga mat, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in and lengthen. Exhale, bow. All right, pause here. Walk your feet up to the width of your mat, toes wider than heels, and come back into your low squat, malasana. If there's a variation you want to take, like a twist or arms up or anything else, if you wanted to play with crow pose, you could. So feel free to explore and play or stay where you're at. Breathe. Hold. Breathe all the way down into your hips and your pelvis. Last couple of breaths. Fingertips to the ground, hips to the sky, slowly lift. So you're back in a forward fold and then walk your toes, heel toe your feet in, toes face forward, feet hips with distance or big toes touch, lift half weight, breathe in and fold as you exhale. Slow roll, 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 like your spine is a link of chains, one chain at a time. And then your head is the very last thing to stop. Once your head stacks, roll out your shoulders. Shoulders back and down, palms open, arms out, mountain pose, Tadasana. Feel your big deep breaths, feel the space inside your body if you can. You're not gonna fall down out of balance. I know some people don't wanna close their eyes, so that's fine, but if you can, close your eyes. Just feel from the inside, what does it feel like? Not a story behind it, not in your mind. How does it feel in your body? Space, breath, energy. Take one more inhale, fill up as big as you can, hold. Extra little sip if it's there. And then out your mouth. Ah, good. Ujjayi breath, switch it back on, arms up. Side body stretch of your choice. Either side, first is fine, exhale. Inhale through center. Get the other side with your exhale up and then over. All the way to emptiness, inhale, back up, high mountain, baby back bend with your exhale, work it from mid into upper back. Re-extend, realign, reach, inhale. And then take a slow dive all the way down into your full beautiful barb, lift halfway with your inhalation. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, plank or modified. Inhale and push the ground away. Exhale, lower slowly, strong arms, strong belly. Take your back bend of choice so you can switch it up as you want. Couple breaths or so. Opening through your front body and when you're ready, just child's pose. Sit back and rest. And ground and breathe. Very nice. Open mouth. Exhale might feel really good. So feel free anytime you want. Ah, close your body. I'm safe. Everything's cool. I can relax. So when you're getting, when a bear is running after you, you're about to get eaten, you're not taking big deep breaths. 
You're taking really slow, fast, shallow breaths. So by taking big, deep breaths, you're signaling to your body, everything is safe, everything is okay. It's time to relax. You can soften all those places that you're holding tension. Ah, you can let go. Downward facing dog. All righty, inhale your right leg back and up. And then let's take it into our pigeon pose, right shin to the top of your mat. Can't remember if you like to take it on your back. So regular pigeon or supine pigeon or even a seated pigeon or any other variation thereof, go for it. Just as long as you're setting yourself up intentionally. Thanks, Barb. And then slowly just settling in breath by breath, send those breaths down into your hip. Again, tell your body with your big, deep breaths. Oh, even though you're uncomfortable, even though there's this discomfort sensation in your in my hip right now, down in your right hip, it's okay to relax still. You don't need to freak out. We're safe. Softening with your exhales, and it doesn't mean you have to change anything physically. Softening can be energetic. Softening can be something that's so, so subtle it can't even be seen on the outside. Take about three to five more breaths in your pigeon. From bottom of your next exhale, start to find your way back upright. And we're going to come into a seat. So just ease your way over onto your outer right glute, outer right hip. But stay here. So, sorry, go back. <laughs> and then just adjust a little bit so that your right shin is completely parallel, completely parallel to the front edge of your mat. And then slide your left knee up towards your right heel. Yes. So from here... Hands behind you, lean back. And sometimes I kind of have to play around with the positioning of my left foot. I have to adjust my ankle a little bit. But we're leaning all the way back as far as we can. So some people can lay all the way down. Me, I can't go back very far. This is about it. But you don't want your inner left knee to lift. So work your inner left knee forward and down. Don't let it lift. The intention is not to create a hard opener or a back bend. But instead, we want to neutralize our spine. So knit your front ribs together and pull your belly button down towards your spine. Breathe here. So we're really working the inner rotation of our left hip joint. So opposite of what we just did in our pigeon pose with our right hip. This, this movement, as we age, it's one of the first things to start going. So... If it feels uncomfortable, feels uncomfortable for me, I'll say that. <laughs> Just meet yourself right where you're at and be there, breathe there. Last couple rounds. Nice job, Barb. And then slowly start to come back up. Let's take this left leg and now let's swing it all the way around. Left foot to the outside of right knee. Your choices are you can either kind of scoot your right heel closer to your butt and adjust so that your sit bones are on the ground, or you send your right leg forward if you'd like. Hug your knee in and sit up really, really tall. Reach your left arm to the sky, breathe in. And then exhale, twist, bring your left hand down behind you. Maybe gazing over your left shoulder. You can use your right arm however you'd like. So if you like it where it's at, perfect. If you want to latch your elbow, feel free. Take about three rounds of breath, working your twists. Good 
Good job, bottom of your next exhale, unwind. If your right leg isn't already extended, extend your right leg, bring your left foot to the sole, or <laughs> the sole of your left foot to your right inner thigh. We're just gonna take a nice forward fold here. So tree pose, it's like tree pose with your legs, square your hips towards your extended leg, flex your right toes back, sit up tall, reach up, inhale. And then like you're diving forward, reach your butt back, reach your heart forward, and then fold in. Keep pressing your foot into your leg, leg into your foot. Your right toes should be facing straight up, not in, not out. Pull your right butt cheek back as you dive forward. Forehead towards your shin, nose towards your knee, navel towards your spine at the bottom of each exhale. Take just about two more deep breaths. Good job. And bottom of your next exhalation, let's just let it go slowly. Roll up, roll up. And head lifts last. Turn over your left shoulder, left hand comes back behind you. Press into your left palm, press into your right heel and lift your hip. So variation on uh, variation on side plank, modified side plank or a modified wild thing. You can let your heart open more. Take one more deep breath, lengthening, lots of space and then let it go. Find your way to down dog however you want to. And I just feel like being super not fancy today. So I'm just going to roll over my feet. You can get there however you want. You can take a vinyasa if you feel like it. Downward facing dog pose. Walk it out. Ujjayi breath. Left leg to the sky. Inhale. A pigeon pose when you are ready. Bring your left shin forward and gently set your body down. Coming into pigeon on the left. If there's any other way you want to take it on this side, you're welcome to. So always, always, always honoring your own body, whatever it needs today. And breath by breath, just settling in. Send your big spacious inhales down into your left hip. Use them to create space there, to soften the muscles there. Then as you exhale, tell your body, okay, you're safe. Just relax into that, melt into that space. Keep pulling your left butt cheek back and up. If you want to go deeper, all you have to do is scoot your back knee or right knee back a little bit further. Take about three or four more rounds. Bottom of your next exhale, maybe you take it out of your mouth. Let's start to find our way back up, right? Oh, you're down on your back. Okay, so coming into that funky variation, kind of like a box pigeon. So left shin parallel to the front edge of your mat, and then scoot your right knee towards your left heel. If this isn't going to work for your knees, then you can always modify it's just the same thing as we do like a windshield wiper variation of a twist. This would be your modification. Otherwise, left shin parallel to front edge of your mat, slide your right knee up towards your left heel and then bring your hands behind you. If you need to adjust it all through your right ankle or your right foot, do so. Start to lean back, keep the inside of your right knee on the ground, don't let it lift. So as soon as it starts to lift, that's as far as you go. And then focus on not creating a back bend, but the opposite. Pull your ribs, knit your front ribs together. Draw your belly button down. Breathe down into your right hip. That inner rotation in your right hip joint is what we're working. Good 
good. Take about three more rounds, four more rounds. And at the end of your next exhale, ease your way back up. Pick your right leg, swing it all the way around. So right foot to the outside of left thigh. Kind of adjust so that your left heel comes in towards your right butt cheek and your sit bones are both on the ground. Or option to extend your left leg forward, flexion through your left toes. Hug your right knee in, sit up tall. <laughs> You're there, good job. Right arm up. Inhale and then exhale the twist. Right hand down. If there's anything you want to do with your left arm, go for it. Your gaze over your right shoulder behind you. Breathe down into your belly. Good. Bottom of your next exhalation all the way to empty. Then unwind. Straighten your left leg if it's not already straight, if it's not already extended. And then sole of your right foot to your left inner thigh like a tree pose. Take a moment to adjust if needed. Square your hips towards your extended leg, sit up tall, arms up. Inhale, flex your toes back. Now reach your left butt cheek back as you reach your heart forward, dive forward, and then fold. So folding over your left leg, press your foot into your inner thigh, press your inner thigh back into the sole of your foot. Work this pose with every single breath you take. And last round of breath all the way to empty. At the bottom of your exhale, roll up slowly. Super slow roll. <clears throat> Excuse me. Head is the very last thing to lift up. And then turn over your right shoulder. Right hand comes down behind you. Fingers face away from your body. So towards the back of your mat. And then lift your hips up. Reach your left arm back. So variation of modified side plank or modified wild thing. Whatever you want to make it. Let's go over length and space. One last huge breath and bottom of your exhale, come back down, sit bones to the ground. Take your legs forward and find your way onto your back however you want. So if you want to use your core to get there, go for it. If you want to just use your arms to help yourself down, go for it. Once you're there, take your arms overhead, just a passive a uh, full body stretch. So you're not actively reaching with your fingers and toes. You're just letting your body rest with your arms long and your legs long. If your elbows bend a little or a lot, that's fine. If your feet flop out or need to widen, that's fine. Breathe into your low back. Breathe into your pelvis. Breathe into your low belly in the front of your hips. And then slowly find your way into a happy baby bow. So bring your knees towards your belly and grab hold of your feet if you can. If that's too much ankles or backs of thighs, it's just fine. Rock it out in your happy baby. Neutralize your spine in your happy baby. And if there are any other poses you want to take, any... Any sort of inversion or anything to finish off your own practice. Give yourself about five, ten more breaths. And then just begin your transition into your final resting pose. So if you need some last minute core stuff, Barb, go for it. There's some last stretches you want to give yourself. Go for it. 
and I will read to you as you take your time to find your way into your Shavasana. I love this. This is just by Cori Mascara. It says, how much will you need to change before you are able to love yourself? Or is it, how much will you need to love yourself before you are able to change? So, so often we approach ourselves with this self-loathing, self-hatred, self-criticism, self-doubt. Like, I'm the worst. I'm to this, I'm to that. I need to do better. I need to do better. And so that's coming from a place of not love, but just wanting to force parts of ourselves away. So this avoidance is kind of not this unacceptance of self. So when we love every part of us, even the parts that we don't like, even the parts of us that we maybe eventually want to change, we're working on them. But that part of you that might be late all the time, rather than hating that part of you so you can change it, can you just love that part? If that's how you are the rest of your life, can you still love yourself? If you want to lose 20 pounds, can you love yourself how you are first? Right now. You think once we lose the 20 pounds, automatically something will shift and we'll love ourselves. That's not how it works. It's an inside job. So... Is it how much will you need to change before you are able to love yourself? Or how much will you need to love yourself before you are able to change? Just let that kind of sink in for these last few moments. Feeling into those parts that you may not love so much and showering them with your loving awareness. They're welcome here. Your shameful parts, the parts we hide, the parts we don't want others to see, can we make space for them? That is the practice, in my opinion. Not to avoid those parts and act like they don't exist and just do our yoga practice and we're like, okay, I'm good again. Everything's good. I did my practice. Now I can breathe and I'm calm. But actually, our practice is to give us the courage to go back out into life. And to meet ourselves where we're at and love that part of us, every part of us, how we are right now. And from that place, maybe we start to evolve and awaken and grow into who we really want to be before we even know it. It just happens. So it's not something you can ever force. I'm going to leave you here, Barb, for as long as you want, just to drift off and come back when you're ready. So if you want to take a nap, you're not a napper, but <laughs> I'll unmute you. I did almost fall asleep there. <laughs> well, go for it. I heard my name and I thought. Like, Barb. Okay, I go back know. to sleep. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks. So much. <laughs> go back to your nap now if you want. Have a little Chester. <laughs> Bye, Chester. Bye-bye. See you Bye. next time.